So in a previous video, uh, I talked about what the answer to this specific question is, but uh, what we really want to get into is why does this ratio work? Okay, so what the model is, is that a consumer can buy two products. In this particular product, it is, or this problem rather, um, it's pencils uh, or pads. Okay, and the, the person wants to get the most bang for their buck, so they want to satisfy this. So I'm going to kind of show you how we got that, that ratio contingent on their budget. Okay, or their budget constraint, we might say. Another name for this type of problem is a constrained optimization problem. Okay, so currently we're buying, th we, we, first we want to know the, the income of this person, so or the, the amount of money they're willing to spend on pads and pencils. So they're, they're currently spending on pencils $30 um, because it's uh, 30 times one. And then the next one, they're buying 10 pads. So in pads, the price pads is uh, $5. So they're spending uh, 5 times 10 is 50. So their whole budget is $80. Okay. So if they, so what we want to do in this consumption problem. How many they can purchase? We want to think. Okay, how, how many pencils would it be possible to purchase if they used all their money on pencils? Right. So their budget is right here. Okay. So that's pretty obvious. That's eighty. Okay. So we'd be all the way up here. Eighty pencils. We'll do that in purple. Okay. And then if we spent all of our money on pads. Those are five dollars each. So, uh, how many could we get uh, there? It would be oh, I'm I'm tired, so I'm gonna put it in a calculator. I want to get the right answer, so we'll do sixteen. Okay, so it's possible to do sixteen pads right here. Okay, so we have eighteen or sorry, 80 pencils, 16 pads. We can also do any combination in between. So this is this is our budget constraint. Given our current um, budget or the amount of money that this art student has to spend, they can spend all of their money on pencils, all of their money on pads, or somewhere in between, okay? Now, marginal utility is the additional utility gained from an additional pencil or additional pads, okay? So there's all these lines, we call them indifference curves. And what an indifference curve is, is the mapping of an equal amount of happiness from say this point, let's call this point uh, A, to this point, we'll call this point B. And all of these give you an addition or uh, an equal amount of utility. Okay, whatever that number is, you, you could figure it out. It's academic at this point, we don't really need to. Okay, um, So the, this consumer is indifferent between B and A, and I know that because they, they fall on the same indifference curve, and they'll give you the same amount of utility. Now, uh, I want to spend my money, A and B, spend all of your money on pads and, and pencils. But I want, the key, the key here is to get out to the furthest indifference curve because that gives me more utility, more happiness, more satisfaction is better. So uh, there are an infinite number of indifference curves and they just keep going. They don't cross, but they just keep going, keep on going. Okay. Now one particular point, the slope on the indifference curve is the marginal utility in this case of, of pencils divided by the marginal utility of pens, or sorry, pads, we'll call that PD, okay? So any particular point, this point right here and this point right here, they have a, a, a slope, a ratio of the additional happiness from each product, okay? Um, now, that also equals the price, okay? So if I have the price of, say, pens, and then price of 
since this gives me my budget constraints. So the best possible outcome, if I rearrange those, I'm going to get to here. Okay. So I want to get the most happiness to the furthest out indifference curve. And what that looks like is it's going to be a spot where the bundle, the, the number of goods that the that the purchase that the consumer is going to buy is going to be tangent. Oh, I didn't do that super well. Right there. It's going to be tangent to where it gives me the most utility. So in other words, I've I've spent my budget and I've gotten the most utility. That's why we call them utility maximization problems. So this this right here, or actually rather, this whole relationship happens on the spot or bundle or the consumption combination that is the furthest away from the origin, but can still be purchased. Okay, now the indifference curves might have a different shape, or you know, they might even look like that. They can they can look like that. They can they can have a whole bunch of different uh, forms, but we know that if we've satisfied this condition where the additional happiness per money spent equals the additional happiness per money spent there, that can only happen at that optimal bundle. And so that's why that works.